guys, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been working on this week. I didn't work on these this week. This is a couple gifts that I had received. So far this week, I only worked on one project, and that is not any of these. I did do some knitting and crocheting and things like that and stuff around the house, but I didn't do too many creative, crafty, sewing type things that I can show you. I did work on one project, and I have a little bit of an add-on video that I'm gonna show you. It's something that I made for my daughter, so let me pop up that video here. I think it was 2019 that I did this piece. It could have been 2018 for all I know, but I did this embroidery. This was a, I don't remember the, oh, Super Mom No Cape. She had this as a freebie, a little embroidery design. And since the Cardinals are a really big thing for my family, I went ahead and did this. I did some coloring before I did the embroidery. And then I put this dark green foresty batik on the on the border for it. And eventually this is going to turn into a wall hanging for myself. My daughter fell in love with it, but she didn't quite want the embroidery. She wanted more of a fabric. So she asked if I can make her a wall hanging. And then in 2019 on Instagram, there was a brick and mortar quilt shop that was unfortunately going out of business and they were putting everything on a good clearance sale they had been doing a block of the month the year before or the year of whatever they had a block of the month and with that block of the month you actually got a kit so you got the fabric and everything with it and it had the fusible on the back you just had to lay everything down you did have to cut out like the snow and the tree i believe but the bird was all ready to go and you just had to put it down on your background. They had the background and everything was included. So my daughter fell in love with it. She said, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so we went, got to figure out borders and stuff, and we decided that it would be nice to have a wood looking one so that it was like a picture frame. And then because of that, I wanted to miter the corners like a picture frame. I'm pretty sure this was the first time mitering the corners, and I think they came out pretty good. The only issue I had was trying to figure out where to press the fabric to. So that was my only issue. Here's a close up of the bird. Since the wing sits on top of it, I decided to use a black thread to do an outline, but everyone else I used brown or white just to do a straight stitch right along there. There's fusible underneath all of this. Yep, fusible underneath everything, including the tree. And I had this picture just sitting up on the design wall for months and months and months. And I thought, well, you know what? Let me use Christmas as a motivator. There was never a deadline. It's whenever you get it, you get it. But I always make my poor, my poor daughter wait, you know? Because she's like, no, don't worry. Go ahead and do what you have to, blah, blah, blah. We're moving anyways, ha, ha, ha. So there's always a reason, you know, for me not to finish it. So sorry, I'm holding the camera a little shaky. So I decided to use Christmas as a motivator. So I got everything mitered. One of the things I was waiting on is I was going to show you guys how to miter corners by using this project, but then it took longer and longer and longer. So I thought, I'm just going to do this project and then I will just make something else and use the, the miter for that. And I know it's not always a big deal, but I think it's just noticeable after you quilt it and all, but you can see that here is the seam right there. Now, since the fabric is all the same, it's no big deal. You would have noticed it more with the wood grain, so I like how this one comes into the mitered corner. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to her for Christmas. I finished this. I started basically, I think I started it on the, maybe the 22nd doing the mitered corners, and then I did everything, all the quilting on the 23rd. I received some mustache fabric in the mail as a gift for a friend. I think it was after I would made the mustache bag that was upside down. She thought she'd go ahead and send me some mustache fabric so I can get it right. And one of the things I did is on one of the mustaches, I put my name and the year. Now on this one, it's a little bit harder to see, but I put made for Miranda Lalone, 2020 Robin Lalone. I thought that would just be a fun little thing instead of making an entire label. And my daughter's like, put whatever you want on the back. It's gonna be against the wall so she could care less. I think it would have been nice to have a little 2020 down here for me, 
but I think for her, it would have distracted from it. But I really do love the little snow on the petite tree and a nice cloudy background and then the picture frame. I can't remember if we decided that she wanted to have binding or she just wanted to have where I fold it back behind. I couldn't remember if we discussed having binding on it or not, but I held the binding up against it in the same wood grain and I thought it just kind of finished out the picture frame. So I went ahead and did that. And if she doesn't like it too darn bad, she'll get over it, right? So that's a, one of the things I worked on this week or last week. I really like this idea. I want to see if I can find some different grain. Oh, I, I did a swirl for the quilting in here. I wanted to do that where you can do it look like the woodwork, but that just wasn't going to work for me. So for now, I just did swirls. That's just enough. You don't need a lot of quilting on a wall hanging, just enough to get it like that. But I like to find a whole bunch of more different wood grain and stone fabrics. I think I saw a website that specializes in it. And then make a variety of picture frames like this. I think this would be really fun to hang in my house and also to have for the shop. That way you can have a picture that's not a picture. And since we're all quilters and fabric-y, it'd be fun to have fabric pictures rather than picture frames, right? I can say that she totally loved her cardinal wall hanging. And when I brought it over, I purposefully laid it flat in the car. I didn't wrap it or anything because a little wall hanging like that wasn't going to be easy to wrap. And it wasn't, it was a gift that I happened to give her at Christmas time, but it wasn't a Christmas gift. It was something that she had requested months and months and, you know, a year or so ago, whatever, right? Whatever, whenever it was, she got it when she got it. So no complaints. But I had it so that the mustache fabric was up so she couldn't see what it is. So as soon as she saw it in the back seat of my car, because she's very sweet, and as soon as she saw me pull up, she came out to help bring in the Christmas presents. And she saw it, and she's like, ooh, I mustache you a question. Because that's the joke that everyone has to say when you see mustache fabric, right? That mustache fabric I actually had just recently received. It was part of a gift that came with this item right here. Someone had sent me... A lovely friend had sent me some mustache fabric after my little fiasco of sewing them upside down on that one project bag, and it's different fabric than I received. It's not the same mustache fabric that I purchased, it recent, purchased recently, so that it's a great addition into my mustache stash. Mustache stash, yeah, mustache stash. Try saying that one 10 times. Try saying that one once, right? So other than finishing up her wall hanging, I, like I said, I just worked on some yarn things and you're going to see everything I worked on in Friday's video for New Year's Day. I took all of Christmas down and got, well, I can't say I put it away. I took it all out of the main part of the house and I put it into my fabric room where all the Christmas bins are. But the problem is, is when I brought the Christmas bins out, the Halloween autumn bin was buried still in the closet and I just had purchased some new things and didn't really bring out any of the Halloween and, and autumn and fall things. So those are sitting in the Christmas bin. So now I need to clear those out of the Christmas bin so I can put Christmas away properly, then pull out the bins for the, you know, la da la da yada, yada, yada. So that's going to be a process, but you know what? I am taking a few days off and off of everything. I don't want to do chores like that. So what I thought I'd do in this, I always consider it like a magical free week in between Christmas and New Year's. A lot of people's schools are out, people are on vacation from work. Your obligations are usually a little minimal. I know there are several people that still celebrate different holidays and, or they go and extended Christmas where you did Christmas with one part of the family here and now you're going with friends in another part of the family there. And I'm sure it's a little bit different this year anyways. But I just consider that a freebie week. So I'm going to do, it's like a kind of a vacation. I'm going to do what I want to do. But I decided that if I take my normal couple hours in the morning and before lunch and things and do things that need to be done, like clear out the Christmas and get it all wrapped up neatly and organized and put away right so when Christmas next year comes along, I don't have a hassle. I thought I'd do those little things like that that I don't really want to do but need to be done, tidying up and cleaning in the morning. Then that gives me all afternoon and evening to play. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. What did I receive as gifts? Now my children, my daughter bought me the little, they bought purple tire stem covers. You know when you go put air in your tires and you have those little covers on it? Well, mine wore a light colored bluish green 
plastic and when you touched it the color came off on your fingers and stuff like that i only had three out of four because while trying not to lose one while putting air in the tire i actually lost one it bothered her a lot so she decided she ordered me some purple ones so they're nice metal purple ones it's nothing exciting and nobody really wants to see a dirty old tire but you know the idea they're just these really nice things and then i'd also asked for ladybug houses I want to have, I have a couple ladybugs now in my yard and I want to actually purchase ladybugs and bring more in because they eat the aphids that are trying to eat my hibiscus. So to keep them safe and to maybe possibly be able to grow flowers again, I stopped growing my zinnias, which I'm really good at growing zinnias and marigolds. Those must be super simple to grow or they just like the Florida soil here, the sandy soil. I do really well with those and I'd like to plant them again because I love seeing all those different colors but it really draws in the aphids. So if I can get the ladybugs that are gonna be happy and eat the aphids, then maybe in the spring and summer, I can go ahead and have more flowers. I had already purchased a small ladybug house, but I knew based on the one hibiscus in the front yard and then the hedge on the side, I have the one in the front yard. I have that little house there for that hibiscus and I'll put the other one out there. It's got a flashing for the roof and everything. and. If I get a chance and it's halfway decent out, I'll go ahead and do a little short video so you guys can see what they look like. And it has the flashing and stuff, so it's gonna get ruined, of course, in the rain and stuff. I'll try to put it, I haven't decided exactly where I'm gonna put it. There are some areas that would protect it from the rain, but then I don't know if the ladybugs would find it and stuff like that, or if they're even gonna use it, you know? But if they don't, I just think they're really cute and adorable and I just like to have them in the yard. So the kids chipped in and they all picked up that one for me. But what came in the mail, if you're hanging out with me on Christmas Eve or with us on Christmas Eve during the live stream, you guys know I ditched you for a minute to run out and grab a package that I've been waiting on for over a week, waiting for it to finally show up. It was one of those packages where they tell you it's here and then the package based on, based on tracking just never moves and then one day it shows up in your yard. So it was almost similar to one of those things. So I wanted to run out and grab it. And in that package was some fun Christmas presents. One of those was da 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 a t-shirt. Isn't that amazing and fun? I just love it. It's the purple and it's not a solid purple because I don't really care for as much for, I like solid shirts, but it seems like the ones that are solid tend to be thicker and a bit rougher. The ones that are like the speckled color, they always seem to be softer. They wear better and last longer and they're not like super thick and heavy which is great. I mean, it's a heavy shirt is fine in a t-shirt for the winter, but we have more warmer days and colder days, so I would be able to use it more. But I've got a Create with Scraptitude shirt. I know you guys haven't heard me say that in a while. We haven't been doing too many little scrappy projects, so I just haven't said it. And sometimes I just remember don't remember to say it at the end of the video or anything like that. So remember, Create with Scraptitude. So I have that fun t-shirt, and with that t-shirt, I received this beautiful angel. Isn't she lovely? This is foam, that really sparkly, fun Christmas foam turned into an angel with some decorations on it. Well, her halo came a little undone. That's okay, because my halo gets a little crooked every now and then too, right? I'll just pop a little glue on it. It happens when things come in the mail and I probably bumped it or something. When you're putting beads on beads, sometimes it just takes that little extra to get it to hold down, right? But anyway, she is adorable. And if she wasn't cute enough, where well, do you see this guy? You guys know how gnomes are really popular right now? Well, I've loved gnomes for many, 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 many years before it became repopular. I hung out in a couple of groups where it was really into the fairy gardens and the gnomes and things like that, where people, let's say, you know, you can believe in things and not think that they're gonna be really, like you're gonna walk out your door and find a fairies in a fairy garden, right? But it's a nice fun thing to realize that it is a possibility in certain lands around the world that, hey, maybe there is going to be fairies. I don't know if they ever vacation down in Florida, but if they ever do, I'll see if they want to get on video and I'll show you guys them. But I've got this adorable, adorable purple gnome. Now look at this guy. He's an ornament. They're both ornaments. He's got the sparkly foam and he's got stars on and the sparkly pom-pom and his beard is the white sparkly foam. Now, isn't he the cutest thing? I love my purple Nomi dude. 
I haven't decided yet whether or not he'll get put away for Christmas. The angel, I feel like the angel's okay. She can go away for Christmas and come back out next year because angels are year-round, yes, but they tend to be a little bit more for Christmas. But this Nomi dude, I'm not sure. I don't want him to get dust on him and let it get the dust stick to him anywhere at all. So we'll see what I do. But for now, he's going to hang out with me here in the shop. And then eventually, he'll probably get put somewhere. We'll see. And if that wasn't enough Nomi goodness, I also received this mug. And it's one of those ones where I guess they dip dye them or something. It's got sparkly. So it goes from a purple into a blue into this white and blue sparkle. And it's really nice. It's so nice and smooth. It's one of those cups that stay cold for 24 hours or warm for 24 hours, which is really great. I've been drinking out of an Arctic mug for several years now, and it works great. You know, it does exactly what it should do. But look, it's silver. It's not exciting. This one is exciting. But wait, I mentioned something about a gnome, right? Let's come around. This is one of those things that the more you look at it, the more you see. Check her out. She's a little gnomey. She must be down in Florida because she's got a little bit of sunburn on her skin. She's got polka dot bikini on. She's got her flip flops. Got a little margarita from Margaritaville. Sunglasses in her hat. But look at her umbrella. Can you see what's on that umbrella? Yeah, there's flamingos on the umbrella. Isn't that just so adorable and so sweet? She's probably about my age because if you see, she's got some gray hair going on. Now my hair's not totally gray, but it's a uh, it's definitely got some gray silver streaks going through it in a variety of ways, depending on how I get my hair cut and which way the light hits it. But yes, I'm getting quite gray. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind being gray at all. She's got her beach towel. I just think it is so cute. I didn't notice the flamingos on the umbrella at first. And even my daughter, when I was showing her the picture, she's like, wait, there's flamingos on the umbrella. I'm like, right, isn't that so cool? And it's purple. I love purple. So now that you guys have seen it, I haven't used this yet because I was waiting until you actually saw it before I used it. That way I didn't have to come to the realization of like, oh, I'm going to do a video. Wait, my cup is full of my drink or something like that. But this is going to be really good because I like to have hot tea in the winter and cold tea in the summer. So it's going to take care of it either way. It's got a really nice feel to it, a nice heft to it. Not too heavy, not too lightweight. It's got the little slide cap. So if you want to drink out of it for the hot tea or do a straw. Definitely, of course, needs to be washed. But I wash everything as soon as it comes into the house anyways. And I just love these. But wait, there's more. Before we get into what this is, this is the person that also sent me the mustache fabric and a couple other fabrics. She wanted me to have some of the things that when she shows things on Instagram, I'm like, oh, that's a really cool fabric. And she's smart because she remembers what I like and what I don't like. And then she sent me little bits of scraps and stuff so that I can make a mat for underneath my sewing machine. Because right now I'm just using that old mini quilt so I can slide it back and forth for the lives. I actually use that mini quilt as a placemat when I sit down here and have my lunch because I, I kind of have a working lunch. I'm usually doing working on comments or something to do with videos while I'm having my lunch. So I do it all here in the studio. But with those items, she also sent me a holiday mask. It's embroidered with happy holiday. Happy holiday. No wait, H-O-L-I-D-A, what happy holidays. There's an S on the happy holidays. And it has the fun holiday stripe fabric. It's got the nose, the metal nose guard in there so you can shape it around your nose and everything like that with the nice soft elastic. I haven't worn it yet. I do need to pop it through the washer and stuff. Just, you know, nothing to do with anyone, but you know when you have things like this, like I have to wash the shirt. I just don't wear things until they go running through the wash for any reason at all, you know, nothing to do with anyone. But it's just so adorable and 
Okay, the holidays are pretty well over right now. And I, after I received this, I hadn't gone to the store or anywhere else but my kid's house. And we're all kind of in our own little bubble. So I didn't need to wear the mask anywhere. So that's why I hadn't washed it already and used it. But I will put it in my Christmas box after it's washed so that it'll be there for me next year in case, you know, I happen to need a mask at Christmas time next year. You never know, because even if I don't need this for Christmas time, I do like to... I've always liked to have something on my face when I mow and everything like that. I always think, oh, I should make myself a mask. So now that 2020 came along and stuff and we have masks all over the place, I do wear one. People probably think I'm crazy when they drive by, but it's so helpful when you have allergies or even when you're dusting around the house and stuff, just to have one of these masks on hand to help with keep all that stuff out of your nose and your lungs and stuff. With that, I received this lovely card. I thought, oh, look, it's got cardinals on it and the white birch trees and everything that I love, the little snow-capped trees, a cute little barn-type church. And I thought that was really, really sweet. But it's from the Paralyzed Veterans of America, which I wholeheartedly support. And I thought, well, that's really sweet. But what it is, I don't want to show you anything written on the inside. But it's music. So it's a little music uh, CD. And it has all the good songs, too. 12 Days of Christmas, Do You Hear What I Hear, I Saw Three Ships, Little Drummer Boy, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. So, so many fun songs to listen to. And even the inside of the card has the nice cardinal and the birch trees and everything like that. Now, if you guys know me well enough by now, you might want to know, oh, gee, Robin, Christmas is all over, and that's a really sweet card. What are you going to do? Well... I'm going to listen to it year-round anyways because I love to sing Christmas carols year-round. Do I always sing them properly and on key? Um, no, but who cares, right? Christmas carols are meant to be enjoyed. They're not meant to be sung perfectly. Now, let me show you my last gift here. We've been talking about this back and forth on Instagram here and there. She likes to make these. This is an apron, and I'm going to show you in a second. She likes to make these aprons, and they're really useful. It's not just, it's not like an apron to cook in, which you can use it, but she likes to wear an apron with big pockets on the front while she's crafting. So as she's moving about her crafting area and stuff like that, she can put her scissors or whatever tape measure, different things that she may need in her little pouches here so that it's always on hand so that as you're crafting, you don't have to run back and forth across the room. Her craft room is just a little bit bigger than mine and I think she may have a couple of locations throughout the house. Now mine are really small. I'm in just under 1200 square foot of house, one floor. So for me to have to run across is not too bad of a problem, but you know what? It is really nice when you have these things right there with you. I do move from one craft room to the fabric storage room and I don't always have a pair of scissors in there because sometimes I'll have the scissors and I'll take them back out here with me so then I don't have scissors in there anymore. So this is nice as I'm going back and forth, I can put fabric in there, put some scraps in there, put my scissors in there, tape measures so that I know if my scraps are the right size. But it has the most adorable cat fabric with them laying all around the fabric stash everywhere. It is so sweet. There you go, so you can see all the playful little kittens. Oh, they're all taking naps. Some of them are playing and climbing and hanging out. My cats are always in here with me at least some part of the day for several hours, at least one, but usually three of them are hanging out with me. So this kind of matches what I do. I've got cats everywhere. I feel like the crazy cat lady sometimes, but there's only three of them, so I'm not too bad. So it has these nice and deep pockets to put a variety of things in. And the colors of the black and everything still go all the way up as it gets into the neckline. It has the straps that it can be tied at any length here. And the ones down here. But what's even better is there's tulip pink fabric with pockets on the inside. So now if I turn it this way, now I can wear this out in the kitchen. Except it's tulip pink. Tula Pink sewing machines. She gave me some of these scraps too. I can't wear this out in the kitchen to do anything. So again, it's going to be something to wear around the craft room and when I'm doing certain things because I, I do hold Tula Pink fabric at a high regard. It's not something I purchase. I've never owned it, but I love her designs. I watch her on Instagram, Instagram all the time. It's Tuesday. I'm Tula. 
we're talking. You know, if you guys ever hang out on Instagram, she does a little a little video where she's chatting about something every Tuesday, and that's her little line at the beginning. I just think it's so adorable. I've been following her for many, many years. When she was on, there was um whether it was HGTV or DIY, there was some video or here on YouTube, some channel where she did daily or weekly things and you go into her studio and you see what's going on. You meet her family and her pets and stuff like that. And she just has some gorgeous fabric, but I don't buy a lot of fabric right now. So it's really fun to have this apron to see it. I may just hang this up and look at it for a while and we'll don't worry, I won't do it for very long. I will use it for its actual purpose. And chances are I will wear it backwards like this in the kitchen eventually. But until then, I just want to kind of look at it for a while. <gasps> hidden polka dots. Come on, you got to love hidden polka dots, right? But like I said, I do have a few of the scraps. With, I think it was at least one piece with the sewing machine that I can use and turn it into something fun. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for those who have sent gifts. And thank you for those who just hang out with me every day, every week. Come to my live streams, watch the replays, watch my videos, like my video, comment on my videos, or just watch my videos. Thank you so much, you guys. It has been a roller coaster of a year for all of us. But I loved having this little... This little bubble that we have here in the craft community, whether you're watching my videos or someone else's, I love that we have just right now, just hanging out with Robin. We're just going to do a little crafting together. She's in the background while I'm cooking dinner or whatnot. And this is just a time to relax. We don't have to worry about anything else because this is my little section of time that I'm just going to enjoy hanging out with my crafty peeps. And that's what we're going to do. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Come on back on Friday on New Year's Day at 9 a.m. as usual. It's a Friday. And if you can't make it then, you know, come back whenever you have a chance. That video will be there waiting for you. All about my yarn projects and what I'm working on. I'll show you pictures and everything like that and show you my progress. And we'll just chat about all the things. That's going to be a good background video. I have a feeling it's going to be reasonably long, kind of like this one, but even longer. Because I like to chat with you guys. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell down there. Bye. Hopefully it's not too dark or too loud with the traffic for you to see this. But here's my little tiny one. He's about seven inches tall from the bottom to the tip of the roof. And they have little pieces of sugar cane, some wood with holes cut in it. And down there at the bottom is pine cones and there's some like wood chips up there and I know a lacewing bugs go in it and ladybugs and oh mason bees yeah mason bees they like those so that one's here at the front let me take you to the other one This is the one that the kids bought me for Christmas. I think this one might be 11 inches tall, but it has the metal flashing on the roof to keep it from the rain destroying that part of it. Although the rain could hit anywhere else. It's got a little hanger here. The other one just had a hole, a little slit in the back, like on a picture frame to hang. This one's got chunks of wood. This is regular wood, like dowel rods with holes cut in it, back to the sugar cane, a little slit for whoever to hide in there, and then more pine cones. Apparently ladybugs like pine cones. Now that one is gonna go on the side of the house with the row of hibiscus. For those unfamiliar, I'm right there on a main road, not a highway, but a main road really busy thorough through and it's busy all the time today's saturday evening and it's going crazy but yeah so that's what the kids picked me up and it's going to i'm going to wait a little bit because i have some cosmos growing here and i have a couple other plants that i have to plant i have little shells upside down with water in it and those are going to be sources of water so whenever i water i just make sure those are full i water every few days every day every couple days several times a week, whatever, whenever I can get out there to water, I try to, depending on the rain and everything like that too. So at least every other day I get out here to water. 
But the ladybugs like Cosmos and a few other things that I'm going to pick up some spices like I think dill and things like that. I have a list of them. But they need to have somewhere to go to get away from predators to possibly lay their eggs because they will also lay them on the hibiscus. They don't care. And when it gets cold, they like to not necessarily hibernate, but they like to hide from the cold. And with our temperatures going like this all the time, like right now, I think it's 56 out. And in a couple days, it'll be 79. So I don't see the ladybugs when it's cold. And then I see them pop back out again when it's warm. So it's really kind of cool. But that's what my ladybug houses look like. And if the ladybugs decide not to use them, we didn't spend a lot of money on them. And they're just really cute. I don't think we're going to be able to compete against the traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and let this end. Bye.